I am Chuck Rogers, licensed professional counselor and licensed marriage and family therapist. And I'm Keith Dunn, and I'm still a network engineer. <laughs> For the moment. <laughs> and together we are Tabletop Coffee. Yeah, where we are bold and never, ever bitter. And tonight we're going to talk about never, ever try to have a conversation with anybody when you're mad. Stay tuned. We'll talk about it. So talking about this conversation, don't have a conversation with someone when you're mad. We did uh, a video similar talking about flooding. Yeah, that was one of our very uh, first six, seven videos. Yeah, it, I'll put a link up here. It is really, really it's, great and worth watching. But yeah, that was like our sixth or seventh video. Yeah, because it's talking about how it is that your heart rate gets above. Mm. Do you remember? I don't. 120. 100. Oh, above 100. Yeah. If you get your heart rate above 100, basically okay. it cuts your the smart part of your brain off mm -hmm. and you can't think straight. And you, you turn into a caveman. <laughs> you pretty much, yeah. You begin to say things you wouldn't normally say at other times or mm -hmm. kind of act in ways that you wouldn't normally act. Right. And you can't access that better part of your brain so that you have an intelligent conversation with the other person right. that brings them closer as opposed to pushing, pushing them, them away. further away. Yeah. And I think we've all been there. The oh, yeah. Time. Yeah. yeah. It, it's easy to get there. But, um, yeah, I don't do that. I, I almost never do that. No, I think you kind of keep yourself in check. Yeah. Uh, I work with a lot of individuals, and I work with a lot of couples. And almost every time I do talk with a couple, I go over this piece with them if this has been an issue for them. And typically mm, it kind of right. is where they get in these sure. really heated discussions. And a while back I was meeting with a couple uh, very, very pleasant individuals, enjoyed the day. It was a, a, a teletherapy conference. They weren't even oh. in the same room with me. Okay. And we had worked together almost all day long. Oh, and okay. we ended up doing so well with the uh, marriage intensive that we ended about 40 minutes early, so about right. um, 4.40 in the afternoon. Oh, that's good. Supposed to end at 5 o'clock, excuse me, 4.20. We were supposed right. to end at 5 o'clock, but ended at 4.20, so about 40 minutes early. And it was great. I was working on an email to send them for follow-up. And then my phone goes off. Let's see <laughs> at what time. My phone goes off at... Uh, 5.39 p.m. Oh, so, my goodness. So a little over an hour later. Hour and 19 minutes later, my <laughs> phone goes off, and uh, it says, uh, Robert says that he can't commit to doing this with me, and now he wants to get divorced. I was mm. really hopeful, but I don't even know what to say to him now. Uh, I can't keep doing this. Okay. okay. So I just replied back to her, Hi, Michelle. So sorry that things turned so quickly. Just remember what we talked about. Just take a break. Take the flooding mm -hmm. break, you know, right. like we talked about in our video. Just take a flooding break. Walk away. Check back with him in about 30 minutes and see if he's feeling better. Don't try to solve it in this moment. Right. She says, okay, thank you. Okay. And that's all. I, and I sat back a smiley face. All right. So the next morning was Sunday morning. I was awake and sent a text to them at 6.52 a.m. Sunday morning. Mm. I said, wanted to check on you guys. How are you all doing? The reply comes back at 10.25 p.m. on Sunday. We are doing better, thanks. Smiley face. We went for a walk and listened to each other and talked about fears and dreams mm. and then just kind of put pause on it for the night. This morning, we are committed to doing what you taught us. Thumbs up. I said, fabulous. Wow. You guys will be great. Okay. So this thing that had mm -hmm. erupted for them was so important and so vital and so right. raw, uh, they couldn't even talk about it. Mm -hmm. They took a break, 30 minutes or so, I don't know for sure, yeah. and went for a walk and had a wonderful, wonderful reuniting conversation. But the difference is... They took that break. And isn't that really a difficult thing to do? Oh, it's really difficult. I mean, because when you've got somebody coming at you, mm -hmm. the first thing that you're thinking of is, I'm going to give it back to them. Yeah. Because or, you want to. I want to give it back to them. Or I really want to solve this because I love this so mm, much. That's true. And I hate this so much. Right. So I really want to do all I can mm -hmm. to repair this thing with you. Right. And so somebody continues to be tenacious to try to solve it. 
but that doesn't bring the other person closer. That pushes them further away. Right. So you, what you've got to do what's really hard. You've got to give them that space so right. that they can start thinking out of the better part of their brain again. Yeah, because they're still over there on that side going, oh, Jane, make me mad. Yeah, yeah, really, caveman brain. Yeah, and point. it's it's hard to process that. So just step away from the situation mm-hmm. so that they have that cool down time. Yeah. It can make a huge difference. It, it can make all the difference in the world. So we're not going to go into mm. you know, how to de-flood right. in this one or the importance of it because you're going to sure. put that video up I will. I'll put there, it up here for like you. Like he always does. So go watch that one to talk about the importance of de-flooding and, mm-hmm. and how to do it. Really important. If you liked our content, we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Yeah, absolutely. And be sure and ding that bell so you're notified of upcoming episodes. Make sure to like it, too. Yeah, share it with your friends. Thanks, everybody. (laughs) Until next time. Oh, I don't know. That might work. I like it. I think it works. That's great. You know, know, there are times when I just feel like a hobo coming off the street and wearing the same clothes during, you know, multiple (laughs) sessions that we do. I only have three shirts. Chuck, yeah, I, I don't make enough money to buy more than three shirts at a time. But you know what? I've got a logo. This is an iZod. I don't have a logo on this oh, one. Oh, I know. I'm. That's terrible. I don't know how I ended up with... Well, I do. I ended up with this shirt because it was on a clearance. And it's a $9 iZod shirt. I got two of them. So that's the only way I can ever get shirts with, uh, <laughs> with logos on them because... They pretty much give them away to me anyway. Maybe IZOD will send us some shirts after your free promo. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Hey, IZOD, what do you think of it with this jacket? I don't know. Let's see, see what they, they say. Might, they might send, they you might a send me too. a jacket. <laughs> please, yeah. please don't mention our shirts while you're wearing that jacket. That and is shirt. funny. <laughs>